Welcome, Rabbi Edery. Today you run under Zog Yehi. Hey. Ah, perfect. Um, it's a pleasure to see you again in our 23rd Effie Zoom call to find out how to restore the kingdom back to Israel, reestablish the Davidic dynasty, reestablish the Sanhedrin, and of course, build the temple. Um, I think uh, there is currently quite some issues going on right now as we speak in Jerusalem, in our beloved city. Um, exactly. So would you please um, perhaps give like a little uh, introduction of what's happening right now? I mean, we are, I think everybody would be very keen on uh, hearing what's happening currently. 100%. So as we speak right now in Yerushalayim, the right wing decided that they're going to flex their muscles and show the left exactly how a protest is done <laughs> with numbers that are breaking records, unprecedented numbers of right wings uh, uh, are going out to protest. This is unheard of. I want, uh, Ulf, if you can roll the clip from uh, the Lion and the Lamb group. Okay. You will see the okay. streets now. The Lion and the Lamb group. Ah, okay. This is the last one. Ah, yes. Okay. Let me just pull this up. Mm. We'll take a second. So No problem. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting. Show the people. So, Bildschirm freigeben. So, Mono Snap. Tens of thousands are going out to the street to. to there we go. The, we don't hear the audio. All. So we're talking about tens of thousands of guys now um, covering Jerusalem next to the Knesset, all the places that matter, all the places that we've been going to to yes. establish the Sanhedrin, paving the way, paving the way for the right wing. And now we're talking about huge amounts of right wing uh, protesters. And again, the right wing don't like to burn things down they're not there they're just going to sing some songs they're gonna they're gonna make it exciting i have another video here uh ulf um that's now popular on on uh on uh what's it called on twitter that's going viral now which is yes. You see both sides of the uh escalator in the train station I'm trying to do it here like this. Okay, Both just sides... the link. I can, um, you know, I just uh, show it then from, I just uh, put it from Twig uh, Twitter. Okay, I will here. I will send you the link right now directly. I'll, I'll put it in the line and the lamb as well. One second. One second. Copy link. Paste. There you go. So you have it over there. So what's happening now is the right wing don't like the protest. They don't feel it's necessary. They're usually trying to build, trying to do productive things, trying to do Avat Yisrael. Um, but if the left want, the, if they want the heat, if we have to go to the streets, so then uh, we can do that too in our spare time. So uh, And without a budget, without being paid off by people that are destroying the country. So that's what's happening right now. The le the right wing are unified. They are pushing forward. Let's see. 
Can you see this? Oof. Now we see it, yeah. yeah. We see it now. This is the brand. Amazing, 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 <laughs> amazing. I was already, you know, a bit, uh, you know, I was a bit concerned because over the last uh, weeks, uh, we um, had this already in one of our previous, you know, discussions where we actually you said, okay, you know, it's uh, the left is paid, you know, or at least, yeah, there are, you know, the State Department came out now that basically they're funding uh, these demonstrations. And we have, of course, uh, George Soros backed um, organizations. So there are a lot of global left guys who support all the protests against, uh, you know, but it's not against the judicial reform, actually. It's basically, it came down to a point that they say, uh, Bibi. We just want to get Bibi out of his office. Well, like we said earlier, Rakesef. Yeah, Rakesef. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they get, uh, you, you showed me their thing. You got like 250 shekels or something like this. You know, when you... They're throwing $100 bills in the streets to the leftists. Whoever wants to come to a protest, you can make 100 bucks a day or even more. You can make 1,000 bucks a day if, you, if you're a little sneaky. And uh, they're just, they have an unlimited supply of money. Uh, for some reason, I guess they have friends in high places, but that doesn't matter. Um, I actually saw a video, a disturbing video of a lady that was involved with these uh, child sacrifice groups of the leftist liberal, the Baal worship. And they really asked, the lady asked them, why do you guys sacrifice your children to the Baal? And they said the way they look at it is that everything in this world can be used as a vessel in the war against Hashem. And the most purest thing in the world is a child. Yes. So for them, God forbid, to, to, to give the life of a child away is a, is, is a war against Hashem. So they know exactly what they're doing. Um, these people are very, very... Uh, people, whatever. These creations of Hashem are very sophisticated in their war against Hashem. And we have to be as sophisticated or more sophisticated. And that's what I like about, you know, our talks, because we're talking on a very sophisticated level and uh, trying to create exactly what Hashem wants, unity and bringing yes. the tribes back together, the ultra-Orthodox Noahide agenda, the Sanhedrin agenda, all these things. And we're not phased and we don't, we don't address negativity very much. We try to make as much um, achdus, unity, in our groups as, as as we possibly can. And, uh, you know, that's our main focus right now. Unity uh, on the Jewish level, on the lost tribes level, on the international level, because, you know, we're all, we're all, uh, we're all created in the image of Hashem, really. Yes, and I, uh, you know, Ahavat Israel. And Ahavat Chinam, we talked about this earlier, really the love, you know, the love for Israel, the love of your fellow Jew, and of course, you know, the love of your fellow citizen, of your fellow man. And uh, I think this is currently missing uh, in a lot of places, absolutely. And um, I think it's very important uh, where that the, well, the faithful, those who really do believe in Hashem, you know, those who do want to do his will, that they actually join forces because we are, you know, up against now the global left. Um, we have uh, today, uh, I think the general strike starts, you know, that um, I don't know how many, uh, El, Al start, El Al stopped uh, flying out people and so on. And at the very same moment in Germany, all um transportation uh, issues are closed so buses don't go anymore trains stop running so they are also like in this absolutely strike uh, strike motors because they want to push the government to do things where you say okay well, i mean that the uh, government's not interested in doing that are ungodly things yes and this is and you know this is almost like 
Corona 2.0 and a light, you know, they're trying to shut everything down. But you know what? Uh, when when the Jews were in Egypt and, and, and Pharaoh was making decrees, the more decrees he made, the stronger the Jewish people got. The more he tortured the Jewish people. So they will have more children and more and more and more. So this is just the end of the exile. It's the last, you know, when, when you kill an animal, even if you do it according to the Torah and you slit the throat carefully, not with a plastic knife, but, you know, with a with a regular, <laughs> with a shochet knife. <laughs> so, yeah. So then... Even if you kill the animal and you disconnect the kane and the veshet, which are the two main arteries, one is the the air and one is the 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 artery that connects the brain to the heart. Even if you cut both of them and you do a kosher shchita, the animal's nerves are still jumping around. And because they so so the animal is dead, or in our case the beast, the beast is dead, but his foot is just still flapping around. So, uh, of course, the left know that they're never going to get the power back again because the right wing are the majority. The only way they had it is in a way of corruption. So yes. this is this is all or nothing. They know, they understand this. We understand this. The smart people in the world right now understand that the youth, people my age, my group, they just want morals and ethics and Torah and, and prayer and, and, and righteousness and charity and just... We really, it's a, it's a shame that a guy like me, I told you this earlier, that's 30 years old, has to try to come up with ways to put the Sanhedrin together. It's a shame on the o earlier generation that yes. they didn't already do this. So it's a real shame. And yeah, we're going to do it. And we just need our space. And uh, I also wanted to say, oh, just one more thing. I spoke today to Rabbi Tzvi Idan, ah, our, yes. our main judge and main Dayan of the uh, Shoftim uh, in the Sanhedrin. And I told him about our visit to the Knesset. I briefed him about the new uh, additions to the advisory board and the new additions to the justice boards. And I told him that uh, I'd like him to come with me to the Knesset and speak as the chief uh, representative of the Sanhedrin initiative, as the judge, the chief judge representative of the Sanhedrin initiative. And he told me, Yossi, this is a very, uh, I have to think about this. This is a place that uh, has a very bad reputation amongst the religious Jewish people. Um, I have to think about this. Uh, and I told him, you know, think about it. And, and of course, I wasn't, I was explaining him that the reason we should go there is not because we need, uh, the Torah doesn't need um, the V, the check, you know, from the local government. Yes. The opposite is true. The the local government needs the check from the Torah. Yes. And right now, the way it stands, that the Knesset is a place where certain people. It's just like going on YouTube. It's going. It's just that's how I see it. It's another vessel that we can use for Hashem for spreading the message. So I told him that's the reason you should go there and talk. So we spoke to him. I spoke to uh, Rabbi Keller as well from the Beis Havad Lachachamim, as well from the judges. Uh, in Brooklyn, he told me that uh, we have to push and publicize. Everyone should you join these protests of the right side, just to yes. show solidarity with the the uh, with Itamar Bengvir and Betalel Smotrich and the right wing parties that are pushing the Torah justice reforms into the system. So, yes, um, and uh, this is uh, something you know. I asked you earlier. I mean, how would this uh, you know how would this be possible? We would really like uh, to send a message, you know, from the nation of Ephraim, um, that we are completely standing behind, you know, uh, what is currently on be behind Itamar Ben Gvir, behind Smodrich, and also the government that they really push this thing through. I think it's very important, and. Uh, you know, of course, you know, there are currently not uh, correct, uh, you know, direct contacts. But of course, you uh, know, guys from the Yehudit. Um, Otsma Yehudit, of course, uh, I, will, I will. I will I will yeah. tell uh, Sim Haratman personally and I will tell Itamar Bengvir personally and his wife on the uh, on the groups that I'm in. I will tell them personally that uh, thousands of the nation of the Ephra of a uh, nation of Ephraim, of the lost tribes of Israel, uh, ultra orthodox Noahides, uh, especially Ulf Debel, the leader, is are sending their their uh, 
their congratulations and their and their encouragement for their work. I will definitely maybe we'll even make a clip from this video and we'll put it on and, and send it to them so that they should know that they have the support of the ultra orthodox Noahide community, yes. the lost tribes of Israel, a hundred percent. Yes, I, I think currently I think it's very important because there is this impression out there, you know, that everybody is siding with the left, but it's not true. There are, I think, uh, a lot of people out there who, you know, who are not, uh, they're non-Jews, they are not even in Israel, but they understand what the fight is all about. And it's really, um, I mean, we started long before the election, you know, with our uh, weekly uh, Zoom calls and, uh, you know, yourself, you know, in the moment it was clear that there is a right wing Torah observant government, you know, where people, you know, we were thrilled about this. And it's uh, it's really a shame. It's really a shame, basically, that the left, you know, is that they are not able to lose. I mean, they are first talking about democracy. So now you have a majority that says, yes, we want to do this the right way. And now uh, people talking about a coup. And the thing is very important, you know, also for, you know, for encouragement, you know, that the leadership should know. Yes, there are also people out there who stand behind them, you know. hundred um, percent. I have here, uh, I would like perhaps, um, you know, go with you. I just um, got like um, a little note, you know, from um, from one of the Telegram channel I subscribe to. And I, let's see. Um, so, and it's this whole issue with, okay, now, uh, do you see the full picture here? I see half of the flag. Half of the flag, okay, okay, this might be, uh, okay, let me see, all right. Um, the whole message from um, here, Yuval Noah Harari. Um, can you see this now? Now I see, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he is basically like one of the henchmen of uh, the World Economic Forum. Professor, you know, get, uh, you know one of the sodomite professors on, in the Hebrew University. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's like here, my message to Benjamin Netanyahu, stop your coup or we'll stop the country. I mean, this is the biggest threat. We have, uh, we went through a completely normal election and then suddenly the left says, no, we don't, we don't like the results, you know, so now. And one of the why does he why does he look like a Holocaust survivor? Why does he look like they're not feeding him enough? I think children? this guy is the most creepiest guy uh, currently around, you know. And he is this one of this, um, you know, leftist Jews, you know. And this is what on he the thinks. one hand, the emergence of a new upgraded elite of superhumans, enhanced by bioengineering and brain computer interfaces and things like that, and on the other hand a new massive useless class ethics matter a class that has no military ethics. or economic usefulness and therefore also no political power on the one hand did you get that yeah yeah he's talking yeah he thinks that humans are disposable he thinks absolutely. that absolutely we are we are talking about now i mean this is a whole spiel this is a whole program of the left world economic forum so number one uh, we have to fight in climate change i mean this is currently the worst catastrophe climate change you know the weather is the weather is bad and so now suddenly it's climate change so um, and uh, he basically says, OK, there is there will be on the one side the elite, so they will control all kinds of. So he said, you know, humans are now hackable animals. There is no God and so on and so on. And that there will be a time where there will be a class there is no use for, they, you know, and they want to just kill them off. It's like culling, you know, it's basically go, going through a herd and culling the herd. You know, just to we've been house. we've been here we've been here before. The Holocaust wasn't even a uh, hundred years ago, and um, it's still fresh in our memories. The kind of p 
people and the kind of rhetoric these people have, which is human experimentation, eugenics, um, inferiority to Hashem's creation, trying to cut down the sanctity of life the way Hashem puts it in the Torah. And, uh, of course, uh, Professor Avram Ehrlich from the advisory board on the Sanhedrin has uh, an idea of how to manage AI according to Torah. The entire Torah talks us to us about, especially me as a Jewish guy growing up with the Jewish tradition, I can actually point out a few things that we talk about the malachim, the angels, and we and let's talk about that for a minute if we're talking about artificial intelligence already. The three angels that came to visit Avraham Avinu on the day that it was so hot that yeah. nobody was able to go in the street, it was so hot. So in the desert, if you're walking around when it's on one of those special, special days that it's like 140 degrees or more, then uh, you, you have to walk five minutes and then you, you're, you're, that's it. You're, you're wet, you're dripping and you, 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 you dehydrate very, very quickly. And especially if you're in the desert, you really yes. like, you're like a chicken in a, in an oven. It's really okay. like that. So in that kind of situation, the only ones walking around are the three angels, the Malachim. So imagine the angels are some kind of Hashem's messengers, whatever you want to call them, but they're not, the rules of temperature don't apply to them, you know, like a car outside, you know? Yes. So what if it's hot? The car is outside. You turn on the AC in the car, you know, it has work. It hasn't worked out. It's not a big deal. So that's number one. Number two, each of the angels had a special mission, um, a, a, a protocol, a command, like the Ten Commands that Hashem created the world with. Hashem, with Ten Commands, created the world. So imagine Hashem is sitting there and He says, uh, in, in, our, in our language of today, Alexa, make a big yes. ball of water. Alexa, divide the ball of water. Alexa, make land come out. So imagine that. So that's the Asara Ma'amarot, the ten Ma'amarot, the ten commands that Hashem created the world. And then with the with these three angels, one of them's job was to heal Avraham Avinu because he just had the Brit Milah. That was the first angel, the the Michael, uh, Raphael. I'm sorry, Raphael. 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 Yes, Raphael. Yeah. And another angel, Gabriel. His job was to turn over the city of Sodom. Okay, so just to turn it over like a pancake. And the the third angel, his job was Michael to say uh, to Sarah, you're going to have a baby, you know, get ready. So each angel had a, spe a special thing that he was supposed to do. And Avraham Avinu gave them food. Out of respect for Avraham Avinu, they ate it. And the Medrash tells us they didn't, they don't eat. Angels do not eat. Malachim don't eat. So out of respect for Avraham, it's like imagine a robot opens his mouth, puts the food in. So that's out of respect for Avraham Avinu. But they didn't need to eat. They all had a, 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 a command. And also we see with Yaakov, when he meets the angel, the Malach of Esau, yeah. he asks him, what's your name? And he says, you know that I don't have a name. My name changes according to my task. In other words, imagine Alexa clean the floor, cleaning the floor. So now she's a cleaning cleaning lady, right? <laughs> and then Alexa, go do a delivery. So now she's a delivery robot. So the, the Malach's name changes according to his task. So we see a lot of things that are kind of sewed in together between this godly technology, Hashem's technology. And according to what Avram Ehrlich explains also, the, the Mishkan, the Beit HaMikdash, was the center of technology. So you had all the technology. You had Hikriv, Hakravat HaKorbana. They didn't just burn the animals. They they were Makriv. They brought it close to the fire. You know, the way we cook a steak. And why is that technology? Why is that such a big deal? How to cook steak? Because if, you have, if you're a panda and all you need to do all day is just eat bamboo, you're 24 seven, all you're doing is just processing the fibers, and it's very hard for the body to break down the fibers. But when you eat a steak, you automatically take in the proteins, you take in what you need, and then you can spend the rest of the day studying Torah, doing mitzvahs, doing the right, uh, do, serving Hashem. So you don't have that transfer of 
breaking down the fiber. So a, a panda could be chewing for 12 hours and the other 12 hours he's just sitting there, you know, just <laughs> processing the food. Very slow so there's guy. no time. Slow guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he has no energy to, to serve, to do anything that a human being. So the cooking of the steak, which is also kind of half digesting the food, instead of eating it raw, you could eat it raw, but if you cook it, you're doing half of the digestion process. So the body gets it as, as ready as possible. And then you can spend the rest of your time serving Hashem. The menorah, lighting a candle. So you have light during the night. So you can continue studying Torah at night. This is also technology. The Torah, cre the creating an environment of spices and incense, which open up the mind to serve Hashem. Of course, this is part of the technology of the, to uh, of the Torah. Now, I'm, of course, now addressing all these things from a practical physical you know you know professor avram ehrlich you know looking at artificial intelligence looking at the torah cross-referencing of course the sanhedrin is a part of the justice system of hashem it's yeah. the only system that works really so and then the sare alafim the ministers of a thousand the ministers of a hundred the ministers of 50 the ministers of 10 all these ministers under the sanhedrin as well spread out throughout the jewish people um, of course, they that's the technology of justice that the Torah has. So we go back to the sources and we understand that the, the Beit HaMikdash is not just a place to do physical things. It's also a place of enlightenment. It's an order. It's yes. an order of creation. And if we look at the Aleph Bet and we look at the Torah, of course, we know that that's the blueprint of creation. You want to know how to deal with artificial intelligence? You want to know where Einstein was hanging out while he was making the atom bomb? He was hanging out with the Raga Chover. He was hanging out with the guy, with the with the rabbi who gave the Rebbe Smicha to be the Rebbe of Chabad. He was hanging out. These people, at the end of the day, they all went back secretly, quietly to the yeshiva to, to ask their questions about how to create the atomic bomb and all these things. Till today, the highest level technology in Israel is created by yeshiva students. In the Shabak, in the Musad, they have secret places where the yeshiva students are creating the highest level technology for all the planes, all the missiles, all the all the Iron Dome, whatever you need. Uh, while you're while you're students. saying this, you know, um, there is uh, you know Beit El Industries. No, uh, tell me about Tikhon it. Yaakov, in Tikhon Yaakov, uh, called Beit El Industries. These are, let's say, some early uh, Ephraimites, you know, coming from Germany, and they started out, you know, going back and forwards until they had like, uh, I think, 500 people in the kibbutz. They had uh, started the kibbutz, and so one day, uh, one night, one of the elders of that uh, you know, group, you know, he got a dream, received a dream, and so they put a patent on this, and um, so what they created was an um, a filter, an air filter, you know, against biological and chemical attacks. So they put this into action, and now they are the prime supplier of the Israeli army. So the IDF, you know, every building, every building in Israel, which is built in you, has to be equipped with one of their air filters. And it's, you know, Hashem, the guy told us, and they have, they are not engineers, but there is this idea, and they came up with this idea, they've, you know, put this into action. And now they are the sole supplier of these air filter systems, you know, for, for houses against, you know, this biological and chemical attacks, you know. And it's um, Hashem, you know, I absolutely believe this Hashem works in this way. I mean, this is how, um, you know, when he spoke to Moses, here, do this as I showed you on the mountain. So on the mountain, you know, Hashem showed Moshe plans how to build things, you know. and um, all the technology, yes, I think, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's inscribed in some sort of one way or another in the Torah code. You know, absolutely. I 100%. Avi Feld, Avi Feld shared with us a uh, a picture and it says over there in the picture, it has a picture of Moses. Let me, let me see if I could uh, share it with you guys. One second. It says over there. So. This man to download files from the cloud using a tablet. Let's let's, <laughs> let's put this up here. One second. Let's see if we can add the image. There we go. So here you have it. Here's Moses. Yeah. Oh, so it doesn't show you the, what it says, but it says over there. So technically, 
One second. So technically, Moses was the first man to download files from the cloud using a tablet. All right. So that's the yes. that's Absolutely. the picture. Yeah. <laughs> so the technology is always there. It doesn't matter if it's a smartphone or a or a tablet. <laughs> you know. If we're already talking about putting a picture, so here is of course a picture of our most recent uh, advisor, one of our most recent advisors, Rabbi Berger from Mount Zion, from Har Zion in Yerushalayim, the seat of King David, the seat of the kingdom of David Amelech. So, of course, I was very, very happy as a Chabadnik to meet a Hasidish uh, Rav or Rebbe and to uh, explain him and articulate with him with the Besur Sagaula, the book uh, the of the... Uh, that the Rebbe gave us of of the of of the license, as I said to you, or we spoke yeah. about this many times, the license to, to to be involved in these things, in these things of 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 the Sanhedrin, is when the Rebbe says that the uh, I can read it now. I think it's it's good for our viewers. Yes, their fun is move on as in dem bashtet di matara fun dem haitik in kinos hashluchim hoylami zu sich zusammen reden und arois kommen mit achlotes teuweis almanas lekaimen befoil wie zu eusfir in die schlichus miuchedes von dem itzdeken zman kabalas pnei mashiach zitkenu so from this is understood that in this is the purpose of the entire gathering the conference of the shluchim the global conference of the shluchim to sit together and come come out with um resolutions good resolutions in order to do them in action how to oisphere how to bring forward the special shlichus special uh uh message uh, the special job that we have from our time to greet mashiach tzidkenu and with that and later the rebbe says that Alpia Yadua, as Beholder Vader, Neulad Echad Mizera Yehuda, Shuhu Roy Lias Mashiach Li Israel, Echad Haroi Mitit Kose Lias Goel, Ushi Egia Azman, Yegale Elevashem is Borech Vishalchoi. So the Rebbe says that it's understood from here that because the Shluchim are already from long ago, they already started the advertising campaign of spreading Judaism and Hasidus. To the entire world and already a long time ago they're already in the middle of this work till the rebbe says they finished this work of spreading the advertising of judaism and the advertisement of hasidic philosophy and still we see that the gaula still has not arrived we have to say that there's something else that's missing that is going to bring the gaula and then the rebbe says undas is and this is and this is it that in every and then the rebbe quotes the rambam word for word Hilchos Melachim, Perak Yud Aleph. And the Rebbe says, in every generation, one is born from the seed of Yehuda, which he is merits to be the Mashiach of Israel. One who merits from his righteousness to be the Redeemer. And when the right time comes, Hashem will reveal himself to him and send him. And then the Rebbe continues that he believes that this is the Friedrich Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, because the Rebbe always never said that he is Mashiach, but he always said that the yeah. previous Rebbe was Mashiach. Again, who taught him Torah? The previous Rebbe. So as far as the Rebbe was concerned, his Rebbe is Mashiach. As far as the Hasidim were concerned, the Rebbe was Mashiach. So the Rebbe can say from today till tomorrow that the the previous Rebbe is Mashiach and the Hasidim are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so... so um, yeah, but it's so rabbi... it's definitely you know in uh, in a way for you know when you when I read the stories you know from when it, how it started from the Baal Shem Tov and so on. I mean, there were always in every generation there were like giants in Torah. There were giants who you know ignited a whole generation um, you know to continue. And um, I think you know the uh, everything what the Hasidists did you know over the last you know it's seventeen fifteen okay what's two hundred fifty years now I mean it's quite amazing you know because um, 
while quite a lot of guys they have no clue about um, you know perhaps you know orthodox judaism they hardly know anybody um, who is a jew you know depending on where you're out in the nations but the chabad and what the chabad did well quite a number of people realized this you know and i think the the advertising in this area was you know due to that hashem said okay now he gave specific people a superior spirit so that he is able to teach the generations absolutely so of of i want i want to uh, read another part which is uh connected to shoftim what the rebbe says on parshat so so is so, it now in english or in hebrew i will explain you i will explain you so when it sounds very yiddish everything yeah this is yiddish mixed together with with hebrew in other words the, when the jews write usually they'll write in hebrew or in lashon hakodesh more precise which is the holy tongue of the torah now, hebrew is like whatever it's another thing but but when the rebbe talks he'll talk in yiddish but 50% of what the rebbe is saying is torah so 50% will be yiddish and the other 50% will be lashon hakodesh the language of the torah so that's basically what you're getting so if you understand German, you'll understand maybe a little bit of the Yiddish. Yes, absolutely. And if you understand Judaism, you'll understand a little bit of the Torah. So, you know, that's what's going on over here. It's a little bit of a mix, mix up. But you, you, I think you understand maybe 40% of what I'm saying, but it's a good yes, enough. Yes, absolutely. You know, but of course, it's, um, you know, um, you know, when you have like, a, you know, even speaking Yiddish with an accent, you know, then it's of course. <laughs> yeah, so. So this is, uh, the reason I want to bring this up is this is actually, I didn't even say this uh, to Rabbi uh, Berger because uh, we were very short on time and, you know, but this is Shoiftim Nunalif. This is one of the most popular Sikhs uh, of the Rebbe. This is the la one of the last times the Rebbe spoke on uh, Parshat Shoftim. So this is like, imagine the culmination of everything the Rebbe wanted to say in regards to justice and judges in the context of the Torah. So this is a very, very powerful piece of uh, of a sicha, of a, of a talk with the, that the Rebbe gave. So, and we actually, I actually studied all the years, starting from the earlier years, going all the way up. So really what happens is, in the beginning, it's like one page, two pages. The next day, year, it's maybe two or three pages. The later years, from Mem Ches to Nun Aleph Nun Beis, it's like 15, 20 pages and so the Rebbe was really just going higher and higher and higher in Kedusha, you know, concentrating everything more and more and more. So every year the Rebbe would add and also continue to build on the the earlier year. So this is Nun Aleph. This is in the 90s already. This is like, and, and this book here is the the concentrate of those Sichas. So this is like the jewels of the crown. This is like, really the strongest so if you can understand it it's amazing this is what the rebbe is trying to pass on so the rebbe says i'll, I'll just read it in english oh, you're licensed you're licensed <laughs> yes you're licensed so, oh, oh should i read it in 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 hebrew and yiddish or should i just go for the english what do you think i just go for the english just go okay for the english. so the rebbe says this is uh, uh the rebbe says that as we said many times especially recently especially about the proclamation of the previous Rebbe, that he says that first we need to do tshuva. The quicker we do tshuva, the quicker we will do we will have the geula. The quicker we repent, the quicker we will have the redemption. And that we already finished everything. Altsfar endikt. And we already polished the buttons, which is, he explains what that means in a different place. Tzuputz in the knef. It has to be now uh, uh, standing ready. Imdu hachen kulchem, which is another layer a level and that has also a lot of details and and he takes that from Hayom Yom and 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 two and in the 15th of Tevet and in other places as well explains what that means but that is also finished uh, uh in order to greet Mashiach it's understood that we're already standing at the fulfillment of the prophecy I will return with the judges and the advisors and even more than Kivat Chila, even more than it was in the beginning. We already have the beginning of this. In every generation, even before the resurrection of Moses, it's it's an it's important to know the Jewish law, the halacha. 
that how God gives prophecy to the to the to the Bnei Adam to the people, a revelation of God in the level of the creation. Till the fulfillment of this, the way it was as Moses received it, and in more so in every generation, it's shayach, it's 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 relevant that a prophet I will arise from you like you like the Rambam says that every prophet that will stand after Moses we do not just believe him because of what you know the the the, the magic that he does or the miracles that he does but because this is a commandment that Moses writ, wrote in the Torah this this means that every prophet is a continuation of the prophecy of Moses and his Torah and in our generation the Rebbe says it's the previous Rebbe and especially what we know that the prophecy will come back to Israel. And this is one of the preparatory steps of Mashiach. That the, the prophecy that we will have with Mashiach, which was which was will be a great prophet similar to Moses. And the sages tell us that the first redeemer, Moses, is the last redeemer. In other words, the soul is the same soul. And in every generation. There is one who is meriting for this. Therefore, we have to know that there's a halacha, Jewish law, also today applicable right before the redemption, that there is such a thing of a revelation of prophecy by Mashiach even before the redemption as a prepar preparation and a beginning of the advisories as you had it in the beginning. Yes. To the full pro to the completion of the full revelation of prophecy that we will have after the redemption. This means that there is no special thing that has to happen right before Mashiach comes. It, it, one second. But it will already start to be manifesting before with the Yatsayh Kivat the the advisors as before. Therefore, the Rambam writes in the Book of uh, of law. This is why the, the Rambam adds this to the book of law. Because, especially because the Rambam is the one who writes laws in this book that are connected to Mashiach and also to the earlier process. And then the Rebbe goes on and says, and we finished everything we need to do. And we have uh, the sages which can fit the judges and also the advisors till today. And it's understood simply that it's time to manifest this. I will return the judges as it was in the beginning and the advisors as it was in the beginning at the start in the full way. And then the Rebbe goes on and says the, the language of the Torah. I will bring a prophet from you, uh, from amongst your brother like you. And I will put my words in his yes. mouth and he will talk to you everything that I command him. To him you shall listen. And the Rambam brings us down in the, the law, in the book of laws. That if anyone has the advantages and the character traits of a prophet. One second. We do not believe him only because of some kind of miracles, but because it's a it's a commandment in the Torah to listen to the prophets that guide us to Hashem. Yeah, and it's and then the uh, Rebbe explains on the return. I think you know for for every for perhaps uh, for those who are not uh, really familiar with uh, you know the history of the Jewish people, you know who just you know tune in, you know get an interest in. You know, in uh, Jeremiah 29, it says basically, specifically, you know, after uh, Babylon, basically, that n nobody should listen to a prophet anymore. You should not listen to a dreamer until basically Hashem brings you back to the Yerushalayim, you know, until he brings back, you know, to the place and then he will fulfill all the good works to him. And... Um, I think you know um, in the um, in the diaspora, you know before you know before actually uh, Israel came back into being before Jerusalem you know was rebuilt. Um, nobody should have listened to any prophet, in a way, you know, because um, you know it's 
only at the last time or when the end times, you know, arrive. And so this is the but, oh, you know, what's amazing about time, events, right? What's amazing about time is that there's always now. Even the history is now and even the future is now because we're working in the now. And okay. yeah, so it's always yes. and, and because Mashiach can come anytime. So we're always at the end of the exile. And we were we were at the end of exile for the last two thousand years. <laughs> so yeah, I think the, the, you know, the exile. Uh, I mean, this is one of the issues. You know, I mean, think about this. Um, um, how many people really took the opportunity and really doing tshuva? You know, you said you know before earlier that the rabbi said, okay, the the quicker we do tshuva, well, the quicker we do have the geula. And when so you the rabbi was when the rabbi was referring to. First of all, tshuva, the first step of tshuva, which is the minimum, according to Jewish halacha, for that, so that Mashiach is able to be revealed at the time, is that that the person has uh, guilt, hear her tshuva, like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. So that's the first step. And then after that, of course, there's the rectification, which could take some more time and, you know, changing habits and all this stuff. So the Rebbe, when the Rebbe says that we already did enough tshuva in order for Mashiach to be revealed, the Rebbe is talking about that minimum first step that he, the Rebbe believes that everyone went through that in the world. And, uh, but, but as far as you're right, we need to develop that and we need to also help those people that want to do tshuva be able to do tshuva to you know find out what the Torah says and so on. Yeah, I mean, we have uh, currently, you know, it's, uh, you know, we are called, Israel is called to be a holy nation. And uh, so it's not uh, just, you know, it's all the tribes. I mean, this is why we are so keen and say, no, we as ultra-Orthodox Noites from the nation of Ephraim, you know, we are going all the way. Um, and so when we uh, take a look at what's happening right now in Israel, like, you know, Yuval Harari, Yuval Harari, I mean, seriously, you know, there is simply no interest to be a holy nation. There's just simply no interest. You know, this high calling, you know, to be the light onto the nations. You know, people throw this completely away. And um, I think this I, if, I, if I would be right now in Itamar ben place, I would, um, I would arrest Yuval Harari on charges of on charges of trying to overthrow the government and creating uh, creating chaos and instability in the state of Israel against a democratically elected uh, government. And I, would, I wouldn't, I uh, would you know, prosecute him or do anything crazy. We would just want to sit down and talk to him and find out, you know, how many babies he's been eating, what exactly his diet is, uh, how many devil-worshipping ceremonies he has to go to a week, Try to understand where he's coming from, you know. Maybe you know. Maybe learn something new that we don't know. Maybe he could give us uh, some great ideas, you know. And uh, just figure him out. What the hell is wrong with this guy? Why? Why is he pushing for eugenics and uh, the end of mankind? And why is he so locked in with the globalists that he swear an oath, a blood oath, with the Illuminati? What's his problem? You know, who's tickling his uh, Yatesim? What's his problem? That's the real question. Yeah. Why is he siding against the Jewish people? Not that it's against the law. He could do whatever he wants. That's the whole point of free choice, that everybody could choose. That's why if we do the Torah and the mitzvahs, we get rewarded, because there are yeah. stupid people like Yuval Harari around that show us that there's another way also. <laughs> so, of course, this is a decision, and he's part he's part of the darkness, which which enhances the light. This is exactly what I, uh, you know, I told, uh, you know, our guys also in German, you know, I, you know, when we do our German uh, weekly Torah um, readings and so on, it said, this is, um, you know, we see now the darkness so much, you know, there is such a difference because after you saw the light, you know, you, you know what the, uh, the Torah says. You know what the uh, the purpose of our life is and so on. And so you try to be the light. In the moment you become the light, you will see immediately the darkness. So when you are in darkness, well, then you, it's, you know, you're dead. You just, you know, um, walk along. But the more, you know, the light of Torah becomes reality in your life, you know, and, uh, you know, after now studying with my guys for years, 
um, I think, you know, more and more, you know, going into a complete different type of freedom because they know Hashem is real. Uh, they know that the, the Torah is true and they see these experiences in their own life. But in the moment they do that, they also see the whole darkness. And uh, without the dark, hundred percent, Ulf. I wanna, I wanna, hundred percent. I wanna talk about. Uh, first of all, I also spoke to Avi Feld, and I should be meeting him on Wednesday in Tveria. We will be me meeting him at the burial site of the Rambam, uh, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, the one who is the the law from Moses to Moses, from Moshe to Moshe. There was never such a Moshe, and because he continues the law of Torah of of Moshe Rabbeinu. And gives it to us practically. That's what we're going on when we're talking about the Gula. So we're going to meet him there. He's going to bring some of his children that he helps, some of the teenagers that he's uh, helping uh, on a trip to the to to yeah. the Rambam's burial place to pray and to study. And they have a few other uh, meetings that they have over there in Tveria. And uh, you know we're going to of course support him from the Sanhedrin <laughs> Initiative Fund uh, and his great work. And I'm very looking forward to uh, meeting him and uh, seeing the the the, the uh, and firsthand the the teenagers, the kids, that the wonderful Jewish children that he's uh, helping to keep off the streets and keep them in the Torah way. So I'm looking forward to meeting him and helping him. And at this time, also, Ulf, I want to address uh, our good friend uh, Joseph Wagner to give yeah, him credit. Uh, Joseph Werner, okay. Werner, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I, I spoke listening. to him for many hours uh, today and yesterday uh, not, I don't know yesterday but I spoke to him twice and uh, at the end of the day I believe that you know with all the politics aside really again like we said the nuclear weapon of the Geula is really Ahavat Chinam I made this very very clear to him so of course you and him had a great history but really looking forward we need to this is what we spoke about as well earlier that we need to uh, look at the world right now. The Jewish people are uniting. They have many differences. The Litvishers, the Chabad, the Hasidim, the Mishachistim, the anti-Mishachistim, this, that. But we're all putting our differences aside. We're focusing on the land of Israel, on the right wing in the power, on putting the Sanhedrin together. We're focusing on unity for Hashem. We're putting yeah. our differences aside and focusing on Hashem. And I told him, you know, Yossi, you have a lot of people that are the nation of Ephraim, but they don't agree with this and that. Maybe they didn't get the update because, you know, I told them we've been we have already done over 20 Torah classes. So maybe yes. you guys are not updated on what we think and how we do. So you should get involved. And the point is, I want to see and I wish that this video also goes out to all the nation of Ephraim because Avi Feld told me some of them. I have been supporting his work with the teenagers, but they're having second thoughts. But really, we everything we do and everything we're going to do on Mount Sion very, very soon with Ulf's great visit um, is going to be all in line with the Torah, all yes. in line with Halacha, all in line with Jewish law. There's nothing that we're doing. And as someone that studied, I'm not a convert. I'm not a Baal Tshuva. I'm religious from both sides of my family. I've grown up yeah. in an ultra-Orthodox Chabad, Hasidic home. So I know what I'm talking about. And for those who want to know, Ulf is an ultra-Orthodox Noahide. He does not believe in Shittuf, which is a lot more than what other Noahides can say for themselves. And he lived amongst Jews, and he he's familiar with Chabad, and he's familiar with the Jewish way. So And he, and he speaks Hebrew pretty well. For uh, you know, <laughs> but much better than you know, much better than a lot of people. So, a lot of respect, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, you know. So <laughs> for all those from the nation of Ephraim or from the other organizations of the nation of Ephraim that fell off, please join us again. We're we're planning a great uh, ceremony of Har yes. Har Zion. So let's make let's let's make peace for the sake of Hashem. And if anybody has personal issues they need to solve with all for whatever, that's not my business. But you know, get your get your stuff together, figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. And let's move forward. I mean, uh, thank you that you basically you know bring this up. You know, I and I told you from the very beginning, you know, I didn't have a beef with anybody but Yogi. You know, Uncle Yogi. <laughs>
you know, the head of the International Christian Embassy, all right, uh, because of this whole Jesus issue, and uh, I was not able, I could not bow down to, I, I could not bow down to this, I, I could not. And um, so when I then, you know, made everything public and I started going out as Ephraim under the name Ephraim, and I said, no, I have a job, I have a job to do, yeah? I Okay, it's a fancy title, priest of the order of Melchizedek, you know, it's biblical, but First of all, it's my job to tell everybody, okay, what's the law? I mean, not only what the halachic say, this is Jewish law, but when you are in Germany, I mean, how is, you know, our faith now expressed? And just by going out and say, hey, listen, guys, sorry, you know, Jesus is not coming anymore and so on and so on. Um I mean, this this was like like a bomb in these you know in these um, communities. Yeah. And I knew from the beginning, okay, when we are out on on YouTube, okay, how do you want to uh, you know how do we, you want to get people uh, you know uh, to listen? How do you want to get them excited about something? Okay, sometimes they say we have free free speech, we have freedom in religion, you know, and uh, so I found out that basically you know these. Uh, the the fight you know amongst those you know from the ten tribes and from the uh, you know those who are returning Chuva, you know it's really because they cannot agree to anything you know it's like uh, you know Avi Feld says okay we are funny people yeah <laughs> we are funny people we are funny people there are some um, of course everybody has his way of life before you know we did not grow up in a vacuum you know and um, so, you know, I, I really thought that we can put uh, various issues aside just for the matter uh, of Hashem. Because, uh, you know, because I think, you know, everybody uh, who knows the prophets, okay, the, the return of the tribes, the reunification of Israel, um, of Ephraim and Judah, well, this is the topic on all prophets. It goes like a red line through all the prophets that... The Geula, without the returning Ephraimites or, you know, the other lost tribes, you know, there is no Geula. There is no Geula. 100%. And, uh, on oh, let way, me just, just, for, just for reference, I want to point out the guy on the right side is Avi Feld. In the middle is Hannes. And on the left is myself, um, Josef Ettery. And this is when we met him, just for those who want to reference him. This is Avi Feld. This is Ulf's first uh, rabbi, and and yes. this is why I also this part of the story is for me and for the Jewish people very very important because once we know that you have been guided by Hasidic rabbis in your study of the Torah in your you know in your way for us to know that people like Avi Feld that's been in touch with the Rebbe since the seventies anti-missionary work anti-cult work all this stuff and so that already gives us a certain amount of legitimacy and authenticity to the story that we have here when we say ultra-orthodox noahide we know what we're talking about i was talking to some yes. guys and they said to me uh well we checked on wikipedia uh we, the noahide group movement was created by a professor whatever 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 i said look i don't know what you're talking about. When I say Noahide, B'nai Noah, I I have been meeting people because the Rebbe said that we should go out and talk to the Gentiles and to the Jews, to everyone, to spread the word of Hashem since I was in seventh grade or maybe even earlier, okay? Every Friday. So I when I say B'nai Noah, it's talking about people that accept the seven laws of Noah, do not kill, do not steal, believe in God, do not curse God. Establish courts of justice. Do not eat from an animal while it's still alive. Respect the family values. Those seven laws. And when I talk about an ultra-Orthodox Noahide, it's someone that <clears throat> that he is against. Gilui Arayot, Shvichut Amim, and Avodah Zarah, the three grave sins of, of Judaism. The the bloodshed, which is the military-industrial complex. Avodah Zarah, which is belief in Christianity, which is believing in a man instead of God. And uh, Gilui Arayot is what we have, like with the internet, all the the adultery. So when you have a a, a a regular Noahide that just has a card in his wallet and it says, oh, it has a few words about the Rebbe and the seven laws on the other side about Mashiach, that's one level. And then you have a guy that's binging Torah eight hours a day, 
he's taking upon himself extra mitzvahs that uh, uh, more than the seven laws, and he's he he's very well versed in the Torah, and he doesn't have this issue of shituf, which is not against the seven laws, but he still doesn't need a helper shituf situation. He graduated that part of his Torah study, and this is what I call an ultra orthodox Noahide. So I just want to put that out there, and I hope I'm going to send this to the right people that should have an understanding of the context when we're talking. Yeah. Yeah, and it's I think it's also you know very unusual you know that um, you know we uh, had this with Avi you know when Alex and uh, Patrick came the first time like in September last years, and it's you know it's of course it's much better for somebody you know from a, from a Jewish perspective to say okay it's much easier to say okay this is an uh, Ben Noid. So then everybody knows, okay, he accepted a certain issue and there is even like a legal uh, legal place, you know, within the, the Jewish people. Let me put it this way, you know. Um, and of course, you know, but when you come and say, hey, listen, you know, we are from, you know, immediately we are Ephraim from the Lost Tribes. It's, you know, hardly anybody got, uh, you know, was involved in this. So it's uh, sometimes it's a link, okay, it's a bit cuckoo. It's a bit cuckoo. So, so the term ultra orthodox noid, you know, this is where I finally say, well, this is something we can absolutely relate to, you know, absolutely, because we from the beginning said, okay, we want more, absolutely. I mean, this is why we completely stand behind the Sanhedrin initiative and support uh, whatever you guys are doing, you know. Um, and I think this is um, very, very unique. And I think it's slowly, slowly uh, sprinkling down. You know that there are more guys like me, you know, and I really, um, you know, and I think that's um, so. This ultra orthodox noite um, explanation, you know, hits the nail on the um, and the head. You know, we want more. We don't want to step with. Uh, you know, I mean, Hashem gave us ten words on the, on the mount. Okay, we should start already with ten. So. So, uh, you know, I think it's um, very important that uh, people understand where we are coming from, you know. And I think this uh, ultra-Orthodox Noite, it's uh, quite quite a nice term. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, still. 100%. And I think that because with the lost tribes, there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot yes. of uh, things that are unsettled. The Rebbe actually was very involved in this stuff. And there's something called gear lechumra. So people that want to join the Jewish people, they could have a gear lechumra. In other words, a conversion, but it's not necessarily a conversion um, uh, because they're not Jewish. It's just just, in, uh, just to extra step gear lechumra. But again, we're talking about many different people from different backgrounds coming from yes. different angles. Uh, even when Hans was here, which is like, you know, one of the most, you know, updated guys from the group, there were still a few surprises and a few shocks, you know, in the way to relate to the Jewish people. And definitely the most important thing, I think, for the Jewish people right now is to be accepting and to do exactly what they did in Bnei Brak, you know, to give out chulent, to give out water bottles, to bring out the Torah. Those are the kind of things of Avat Chinam, of Avat Israel, accepting those who are different or maybe don't agree with us. So, and, and just that unity is, is really what's putting this all together. I hope that those guys um, from the nation of Ephraim, you know, that maybe uh, had a falling out or whatever, I hope that they will be able to appreciate this uh, and join us, especially those who live in Israel, you know, especially people like Mr. Uh, Werner, uh, Wagner? Werner, Werner, Josef Werner. Werner. Damn. Joseph Werner, especially like him, that he already did gear and he has two children that are married with kids and they are, they've been through yeshiva and everything, especially people like that that are so invested in the Holy Land. I hope that they um, are able to get over their, their different issues and uh, support the Sanhedrin establishment, the, you know, the conference that we're going to have. Maybe we, they can show up. We'd be happy to have them speak if they would like. Uh, about the topics that they have expertise in and you know just really because again we can we need all the power we can get when we're talking about dismantling rome dismantling ace of this dismantling the the gay agenda the 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 idol worship LGBT, the leftist liberal it's good yeah, i mean i mean it's disgusting currently i mean i have guys in germany they cannot stand it anymore they just want to leave it's uh 
currently the oppression from the left is worldwide. It's not just uh, Israel, you know, but I really believe that Israel is concentrating on now. And I we have a mass exodus thinking. from all the leftist states in America. They're all the left states are getting empty. All the right wing states are becoming full. Yeah, they all move, you know. But this the is the reason why I really, um, you know, I hope, you know, I hope that uh, very specific that we can put down our, our differences, you know. Um, well, there are some issues, of course, they have to be solved, you know, not with Josef, you know, I hear with Josef Werner also, that I, you know, it's, I told him some stuff, okay, and he's mad about me, okay, because, you know, he argues, okay, I didn't talk to him for now two, three years, Lomé Chané, so anyhow, I really believe that in that, especially, especially in this situation we have right now, where Israel, you know, where the enemies of Israel looking towards Israel, and they see the big division. You know, I mean, I heard that Iran, and so they are looking back and they say, super, we don't have to fight. They kill each other. Awesome. I mean, this is the bad thing. And this is what really had to, uh, should make us think and said, okay, how are we able to put aside, because the threat now, uh, because of this, all this global agenda, World Economic Forum, uh, this vaccination stuff. And so oh, now we have to be, uh, you know, I got cancelled again for um, you know, just by mentioning, you know, it's your, you get censored just for mentioning vaccination or so. But it's an issue which has to be brought up. It has to be brought up. And because of this, we should put out all our uh, dif differences, you know, whoever is on the side of Hashem. I mean, this is basically like, you know, when Moshe came down, you know, and saw the people having a party, dancing around the Golden Cave and said, OK, now who is with the side on Hashem? So who's on the side of Hashem? Who's coming over? And this is, I think, where uh, in this situation where we are right now, everybody who's really with Hashem, who believes, so then he should come on our side. I, I put my life down for this. I said, OK, now I will do whatever it takes, you know, to bring this peace between Ephraim and Judah. And, um, well, I think it's really now time that people, you know, when, and I th hope, you know, that we both can be a very good example because it could not be more extreme. It could be not extreme, you know, German guy, former Christian, blah, 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 and Hasidic guy from the Chabad from New York. I mean, it couldn't be more opposite. So when we are getting our act together and really mean it awesome and I said okay let's go down into scripture what we do again and again you know and and read the text and what what does our friend Rashi say about this and all the other guys so I think this is what uh, you know the unity is all about and when we have this then the world will be a better place it will change and I hope that we can be an example to everybody else you know to yes we can put down our differences you know we should go down Hashem is always right we have mistakes. We do mistakes. You know, we are sometimes unfriendly. Sometimes we are, you know, speaking also not so nicely and so on. Um, but now I think it's time that we get our act together, you know. Act like grown-ups. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, and in Hebrew we say, like the li life is a life is a school, you know, is a, is a... Yes. So... Yeah. So we need to just uh, get 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 over ourselves, get over our ego, get over all the things that divide us, and understand that now is a time. Right now in Jerusalem, there's tens of thousands of right wingers <laughs> singing songs of praise to Hashem. And yeah, we just hope, you know, that they're not getting in, into fist fights. You know, into fist fights. I mean, I saw yeah. the first videos. Now it's already fist fights between red and in the right corner and the left corner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, look, I, I really, I think that when the right rises, first of all, we are the majority in the country. Okay, so yeah. even if we don't have uh, the money or the resources, we, when we rise up, we, we definitely. That's the whole point of of voting. So in the voting process, let's say Israel has six million people, um, uh, and and the majority of them vote, um, for the right wing. So that means that if it would come down to a fight there would be more people on the right side. Now the left are like, okay, let's take it, let's take it to the streets. Well, if you take it to the streets, the rights are gonna the right is gonna win you on the street. 
But the whole point of an election is to avoid the bloodshed. Yes. But, you know, you know. So really, the question is, how long does it take for this reality to sink in? Where you know, so if we're going to talk about protests, ah, uh, protests. Okay, fine. So the right also knows how to protest. Fine. I I'm actually kind of in a way against the right going out to protest because it just kinds of feeds into the narrative. I've never, but on the other hand, I've never been on such a because I think it's it's stupid, you know. It's uh, just a political game, and it's uh, you know you might get hurt, you know if you exactly. So so that's on one hand, but on the other hand, I think that for those people who want to go to a protest, I'm sure if Hans would be here, he would tell me, "Elsie, we are going right now. <laughs> get the gloves, get the gloves. We're going," you know. So so. Uh, I mean, there's some people that it's their nature and that's the way they serve Hashem. They talk a little less. They do a little more. <laughs> but it's not my style, personally. I don't like that style. I actually like quality over quantity. And I like, you know, we can work out our discussions by talking nicely. And um, But, you know, to each his own. The the point is, I'm sure there's many, many right wings that are going to go now to Yerushalayim. I hear that Betzalel Smotrich is going to be talking over there. Itamar Bengvir might be there as well. So we're talking about the right wing uh, uh, party members are taking responsibility. They are telling the right wing to go, but they're also going to be there, just like King David, which used to go ahead of the army. Uh, so all the non-Jewish kings, the king would be hiding behind the soldiers in the back of the army. The Jewish king, or when they charge, he would make sure to go a little bit back so that everyone could go ahead of him. But in the Jewish wars, the, the king would go in the front. So we see that uh, Betal Smotrich... The, the priests went to the front. You the know, priests, this, yeah. yeah, this I found even much more... I mean, you, you went into battle where the priests were at the front and then the army came. You know, so it's basically Hashem first, you know, sometimes with the Ark or so. I mean, you know, this is how the... The, Torah, the, the king is holding the better. Torah. The priests are there with the Ark, of course. We're going with the power of Hashem. And the same thing, you see the right wing... Right wing... Uh, Knesset members, they're going to be there and they're inviting everyone. And what are they going to do? What does the right wing do? When the left get together, we know what they do. They dance without their clothes on. They make a fireplace. They act like a bunch of animals. When the left get together, uh, when the right get together, they're going to be just like the two videos that we saw. They're singing, you know, with a little change, Bibi Melech Israel, but it's kind of humor, you know, but it's David Melech Israel, Chai Kayam. I'm sure that comes right after. <laughs> and then and and the other one they're singing uh, the the nation Am Hanetzach the nation the everlasting nation doesn't is not scared of a long path and uh, they're they're sing they're saying quotes from the Tanakh and they're going to be singing Sukkim so this is going to be a great Kiddush Hashem to sanctify Hashem's name in the world to show Hashem, to everyone that Hashem is the King and I'm very happy about this it's a good thing and let's hope that uh, you know we see peace uh, and uh, and the left give uh, the the right what, what they already won with a democracy. Uh, Itamar Bengvir wrote, now it's our turn to scream, Democratia. In other words, the right wing won the election. Democratia. Yeah, so yes. let us do our job. And you I know, think this is, you know, one of the biggest arguments, you know, when uh, when they now say, um, yes, they want to change. I mean, if um, really, you know, this justice reform would be stopped I think this would be the most ridiculous thing because then it's really that anarchy and some woke guys, it's just because they're going out and screaming, um, you know, then it's basically, this would be most anti-democratic whatsoever. Because th this is why they, they should not step down. The government should not step down. If they would step down from that reform, then it's caving in, you know, to all these uh, left lunatics. And I, I wouldn't do it. There, no, but there would be no trust in this anymore uh, whatsoever. Oh, there's one last thing I want to share. And then after that, hopefully you'll have some closing statements. So here I have um, the, uh, the uh, papers from the Temple Coin delivery, right? Yeah. Uh, the of the support of the Sanhedrin. This I got from Hannes with our last delivery. And here I got a letter. Let me let me uh, let me see what I can do here. Uh, let me take off the background for just a minute. So here I have a letter from the Hatnu'ah Lekinun Hamikdash. Yes. Okay. 
this is the the movement in preparation of the temple of the Beis Hamikdash. It says in honor of Rabbi Yosef Edery, and I opened it up, and we have here a special pamphlet with all the hotline numbers of all of the temple institutions in Israel. So we have here Machon HaMikdash, Ne'amanei Harabait, Tnuat Chai Vekayam, Agudat El Har Hashem, Yeshivat HaRayon HaYehudi, Otsar HaMikdash, Tnuat Shocharei HaMikdash, Nashim Laman HaMikdash, Yeshivat Torat HaBait, Kamehei HaMikdash, Mitsudat Yehuda, Agudat El Har Hamor, Merkaz Harabait, Merkaz HaKohanim, Mishmar HaMikdash, Bet HaMikdash HaShlishi, and then Harav Chagi Yekutiel and Harav Michael Benari. So we have hotline numbers of all these different uh, organizations. And um, then we have a map of the Temple Mount. Let me, let, me, let me shut it off again. One second. So we have here a map of the Temple Mount with yes. uh, a, a, it's like a halachic guide where we're allowed to go, where we're not allowed to go. Uh, they have mapped out in red the area that we're not allowed to walk on. We have mapped out in blue the area that we're definitely allowed to go, and in green. And then we have different areas and so on. And this, I'm very happy that they sent me this. Um, and uh, definitely going to go through some of the phone numbers and make a few calls, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, to to invite them first of all to our conference, the study of the Sanhedrin establishment and the unify unification of the uh, uh, and cooperation uh, in legislation of halacha of of the nation of Ephraim and Yehuda and Jew and the Jewish people. So definitely, we have a lot of work to do right now. Just as they say, coming on my desk in real time. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. And uh, definitely, uh, I'm not sure who, because we spoke to so many people, Ulf, you know, I'm not sure who was the one who, who pulled this off. Yeah, but you got it. You, you yeah. got it. Yeah. yeah. You're now on the, you're now somewhere on a list. <laughs> I'm on a list. Uh, I'm list? on a list. Schindler's <laughs> list. All right. So there's definitely a lot to look at here. And uh, definitely we're looking forward to making more connections. Again, Rabbi Tzvi Idan, I told him that you have to be bold as a leopard you got to go into the Knesset like you own the place, like the mic belongs to your mother-in-law. Yes. You just grab yes. it and tell the yes. Jewish people what they need to hear. And yes. I think that that's the main message that I need to tell my Jewish brothers. The time of your redemption has arrived and stop fiddling around. It's time for action and let's go, you know, and that's it. And let's let's hope that uh, that and there you go. Ulf. Closing statements, please. It's yes. all yours. Uh, don't wake up the sheep. Forget it. Get the lions. 100%. Get 100%. the lions because we are about, you know, that Jacob, he is like a little do all over the people. And when he rises as a lion, well, he goes through the and he will devour and annihilate his enemies. And this is where we are, I believe we are at that stage that Yaakov, he has to stand up like a lion, every one of us. Sheep no more. So that's my closing statement. All right, Ulf. Thank you so much for having us today. I think it was a great shiur, very positive, and uh, let's hope that the people agree with I us. I completely enjoyed it too. Thank you so much, Joseph, and talk to you next week.